what's going on guys and welcome back set championships are just around the corner and i said we were going to do this video so how do we beat bucky the elephant or should we say the squirrel in the room this is the best deck of the format there's no surprise about it maybe it doesn't quite see the representation especially at a lot of local levels because of the sheer price of the deck it is like a six to seven eight hundred dollar deck and well sisu's half that Blue Steel is a third of that. Ruby Amethyst is a quarter of that. So for these reasons, maybe you don't see it a ton. But if you do, this is the video for you. So before we talk about how do you beat this deck, I think we need to understand this deck. Um, throw a list up on the screen here for you guys. Just a sample list. This isn't necessarily finished. Um, I do think it's actually a decent list, but I just threw it together quick, kind of showing some of the play lines because... There's like two different ways to play this deck. This one is more, I, I'm trying to think of the best way to even put it. The other version is more back end heavy where you're playing bigger top deck characters, you're playing for the longer game, you're playing for the better top decks. Whereas this deck, you're loading up a little bit more earlier and trying to win sooner. Um, you have your Ursula Deceiver of All in there with your 10 songs that you can sing. Sudden Chills are in there where as some other builds are cutting it. Um, this type of build often will play Hidden Cove, which can be really nice to move like your Diablo there. So things like Storm Rage on, um, grab your swords, don't just take it out because it'll have that extra willpower from it. So builds like this are seeing a decent bit of success. Maybe you want to play Smash instead of Baboom if Hidden Cove is something that you're really worried about in your local uh, local meta as well. So we're not going to go necessarily card by card through it. It's just kind of showing you guys um, how the deck works. Obviously, one of the big power plays of this deck is going to be turn one Diablo, where then they get to look at your hand, know what's safe. Turn two, play Bucky, and then shift Diablo by discarding a song onto their other Diablo, forcing you to discard on turn two. And then they can go ahead and quest right away uh, with that said Diablo and then start drawing cards back on your second turn of the game. This just forces a very aggressive approach because then odds are turn three, they come back with another Diablo or an Aladdin, forcing you to discard once again. Then when you hit four, you might see things like Flynn, like Jafar. And then as you hit turn five, you'll see things like Beast and Robin Hood coming down and possibly even Tinkerbell. Uh, this type of build, Tinkerbell is, but isn't in some of them. It's hit or miss as far as what you see with her but they just really go after your hand aggressively and put these big threats on board um, that you have to find a way to deal with while trying to ink and get your characters out what's the other build kind of looking like so this one very very similar but you'll probably see less one drops like in the you know seven to nine range probably in most cases um, and that's total like coves characters everything in that one drop spot also, your two-drop spot, you're probably just going to see the Ursulas and Buckies in this type of a build, whereas then you're going to get to your threes because you want to hit that um, discard on your opponent right away, uh, whether it's shifting Robin Hood, Diablo, Aladdin, pending your matchup. And then turn four or five, every turn after, you want to hit things. Um, there's some cards like the two green beasts, the Wolfsbane or the Relentless, both very good top deck cards. Um, off the top of your deck and this is a format where it's not going to be uncommon to um, get into those top deck battles to get into those games where it's like who can pull the better card off your deck and that's why some bucky lists are changing into this where things like ursula deceiver of all can get weird to play on curve and late game just are not very good so you cut her for those late game um, threats like cricky like beast like tinkerbell things like that where as the game progresses, you hit your one, two, three turn curve, and then you just focus more on pulling off good cards off the top of your deck. Uh, typically, you'll see potentially, I don't know how many hypothetical words I can use in a sentence, um, between Storm and Strength, uh, seven total with no sudden chills without that Ursula. Uh, again, especially with Cove in the format, maybe Strength is the better four of and Storm's the better two of. Storm also answering the frenemy, though, in the Ruby Amethyst matchup is really big. Um, you have things like Zeus, grab your swords in this type of build because you're playing more of the big characters as well. Um, 
both decks play similar. One's just a bit more front loaded and aggressive, whereas the other one's a bit more back loaded and just better into the top decking game. But versus some of the decks in the meta, maybe you don't want to get into that top decking battle versus them, especially if you can't aggressively discard their hand quick enough or they just kind of are able to answer you, um, like if they have multiple brawls and they just keep hitting your Diablos and you're not getting that advantage that you really want to be able to. Uh, so what are some cards that this deck really is going to highlight and focus on? Obviously you have your Bucky. Bucky is what this deck revolves around. Yes, you have other ways to win. You don't have to see Bucky to win. Uh, with this deck because you're playing so many good cards you're playing the steel songs you're playing the steel top end you're playing diablo possibly ursula like there's a lot of really good things that this deck has going on for it um, then turn three that turn three uh floodborne is just so important and what really makes this deck just start rolling you um, whether it's diablo even without a bucky or assuming you have bucky diablo or aladdin like Making your opponent discard it this early in the game and then just every single turn while they're trying to ink, play a card, and discard a card on your turn, they just run out of resources really, really quickly. Um, you have those top end cards like your Robin Hood, like your Tinkerbell as well that you just get to take advantage of. Those songs we mentioned, the Strength of the Raging Fire, the Let the Storm Rage On, Grab Your Swords. Um, you have all of these really, really good things going for you when you're playing this deck. Uh, we already went over a couple of the lists just to show you guys roughly what they can play. Um, again, that curve, whether they're going to go Diablo, Robin Hood, possibly Pegasus turn one, Bucky two, and then either come out with the Aladdin, the Diablo, or even shifting turn three. Uh, just really forces you to make every single card in your hand count. Um best ways that you're going to be able to counter this deck is by drawing more cards. If, if you can draw cards and keep up with them that way, you might be able to have a decent chance. So what are some cards in each color or what can each color really do against Bucky? What can they do to help you out, right? So we're going to go through the list first. Amber being the first one. Um, unfortunately on its own, Amber is going to fall into what I call a support color category where you have your Rapunzel, your Julieta. These cards can allow you to draw potentially. But other than that, you have Bare Necessities. You can hit one of those songs out of their hand, see their hand, kind of judge what route they're going to go with their hand. Um, but Amber doesn't really have a whole lot of answers for this deck on its own. You can pair this up with Steel in the form of Steel Songs, and all of a sudden you have Whole New World on turn two, or you know anytime right around there. Then your aerial can search out all your steel songs. Um, so being able to pair it with something like that actually is very, very beneficial. But on its own, Amber really doesn't do a whole lot into this Bucky matchup. If I miss any cards or you have a tech that you want to reveal, just let me know down below and I will absolutely give my thoughts. Uh, moving into Amethyst, the one big thing Amethyst has going for the Bucky matchup you have friends on the other side. You have Merlin Rabbit. You have Maleficent. You have lots of draw cards and cards that just replace themselves. Your Broom, your Chernabog, your, um, not Pinocchio, your Cusco on two. And if you really want your Blue Fairy, you can play in certain decks, especially if you have a lot of Floodborns, and you just start drawing an extra card every turn, which just naturally combats it. Keeping in mind their Steel Songs will build out your Fairy pretty quickly, so it's not like they don't have an answer for it. How can you otherwise go after them? Your Pan Shadow and your Peter Pan with Rush and Evasive are very good ways to take out that Diablo, Diablo effectively. I personally like Pan a bit more because, especially if they get that turn 2 shift Diablo, it just answers it one turn sooner. Another Amethyst card you definitely should be playing in almost every single Amethyst, if not every Amethyst list, and that is our Queen's Castle. Whether it's the draw or the high willpower, just constant lore gain, um, this card is just really, really strong this format. So we're going to actually get into Emerald now. What can Emerald do in this matchup, right? Well, you have your Ursula, so you can go ahead and hit their songs, depending 
you know, if they have that Ursula and they want to double sing the Storm Rage on, you can hit that. If they're playing the Sudden Chill and you can't afford the discard, you can hit that. If you die to grab your swords and they play that, you can hit that. Or you can just see their hand and kind of gauge what you should do. What are some other things you can do? Out discard them, try and get their resources gone before yours. Um, otherwise, you know, card for card, Diablo answers Diablo if you don't care about losing it. So that's just unnecessary to point out. Um, so that's why we did it. Uh, some other three drops. So Kit Cloud Kicker can go ahead and bounce those Ursulas, those Diablos, those early shift plays to try and slow your opponent down. Keeping in mind, if you bounce something like a Diablo and they replay it, they are going to make you discard again. But odds are they're coming down with a Floodborne anyway, so you're really not losing any ground. Jacques is another really decent card. If you have a way to take advantage of it, you make essentially like Diablo gain Reckless, and then you try to force them to attack into one of your characters um, and effectively remove their Diablo that way. So moving on to Ruby. Ruby has probably some of the most answers for this deck. If you can establish Flynn on two and just start dropping big characters, getting that three lore plus your other characters questing or challenging, you can actually put a lot of pressure onto Bucky Discard. If you can get two Flynn's out with a high, uh, high character, again, you're going to apply a lot of pressure. They really need to see those songs to get rid of that Flynn. Otherwise, if they don't see their songs and Flynn sticks around for a few turns, you could be in a pretty good spot. I wouldn't solely re rely on Flynn, though, but you have Teeth and Ambition as an option. You have Brawl as another option. Then as you get into your late game, you have Madame Medusa, you have Lady Tremaine, you have Sisu, you have Be Prepared. The problem is getting to this late game with enough ink. So typically, if you're playing Ruby, you want to do one of two things. Pair it with blue and try to ramp quickly to speed up getting to those power cards. Or you want to pair it with Amethyst and draw cards early to continue those resources so you can get to that late game. Uh, for this reason, I do think Ruby is by far best paired with one of those two colors. And I think every single person in the game would agree with me on that. What does Sapphire have going for it? I think very similar to Amber, not a whole lot. They have more than Amber, though, I will say that. You have your Hiram Popsicle for draw. You have Hades Let It Go as removal, if you can get to them. Uh, especially Hades being the 7 cost can be hard to get to. But kind of like in Amethyst with the castle, you have a 9 willpower location in McDuck Manor that gets you 2 lore each turn. This can prove to stick around for quite a while versus the Bucky deck sometimes. And if they're sitting here taking multiple turns to challenge your manor, they're taking turns off of questing. So it can help you out in that type of regard. Um, maybe you play against someone who has a sneaky avalanche in there and takes out your manor, uh, but it's not really seeing too, too much play. Some other Sapphire cards if you're playing a Sapphire deck. Ice Block. Ice Block paired especially with Ruby because then all of a sudden you're Medusa can hit a character with four because the ice block knocks it down to three. You could play the little Sisu who hits the one because your ice block can give Diablo minus one strength, and then you drop Sisu and you get rid of Diablo that way. So you have some answers with ice block there. And also, Great Stone Dragon's been starting to see a bit more play because if you're sitting here discarding your hand, you're losing that hand resource for Quill. And if you're discarding just characters, you can just get free advantage off of your Great Stone Dragon um, in this regard. So I do think that Great Stone Dragon should be strongly looked at for pretty much any Sapphire deck. I'm not saying you should play it, I just think you should strongly consider it. Lastly, we have Steel. We've already talked about it. Like, you have your Steel songs. Like, your songs can be really good in this matchup, keeping in mind if their Diablo is exerted and you use your Storm on it they're going to still draw a card. Or if they have Hitting Cove, it becomes a little less effective. Uh, Strength of the Raging Fire, however, still can take it out if you have three characters. Uh, Baboom versus Smash is a strong argument. Which one do you want to play? Uh, even Avalanche. Avalanche dealing one across the board to take care of a Bucky on turn four can be good, while also still giving you that utility to take out a location. Robin Hood's just a really, really strong card overall, so don't ever underestimate him. And that shift with the 3-6 gaining and also replacing itself with the draw, 
Um, Robin Hood can be very effective and help you take down multiple characters, especially if you can like pair it up with like a Pegasus playline giving him evasive, but that's not very common um, in, actually that would be a green steel deck for sure, uh, but it's not very common in that deck either. Uh, what other things does Steel have going for it? Well, you can play Namari or Piglet to potentially challenge that Bucky. Um, as someone who tested a Piglet out a lot, it by the time you get it out and get it set up, it felt like their Bucky's already not doing a whole lot. So I was a little bit underwhelmed with Piglet. But at the same time, I don't think it's necessarily a bad card to play. Same with Namari. It's a turn sooner. It just isn't quite as good in the top deck. At least Piglet's a 5 will with resist 1 and quest for 3 if you pull it off in the top deck and you can just play it and use it to quest. Lastly is a whole new world. What's the best way to combat discard then? Drawing an entire new hand. You force both players to just refill their hand. So that's going to be really good for you um, to make sure that you still have those resources to go ahead and play your game. So if we're going to talk about some specific decks now, like what does, what do we want to go with? Sisu on Ice. How does Sisu on Ice combat Bucky Discard? This is Ruby Sapphire, by the way. You, again, pairing things like your Ice Block, you can pair with your Sisu Daring, um, is it Daring Visitor? Uh, who? That's the three drop, the one we already mentioned, where you can Ice Block, make them lose the one on Diablo, play her. And then get rid of Diablo. You can use that type of interaction. You can do the same thing with Medusa in the late game in your ice block. Uh, shifting Sisu on 6 can be very strong. You just need to get to this late game. So, like, seeing Popsicle is very, very important. Seeing multiple Popsicle, very, very important. Getting those cards on board. Seeing Hiram is very like super vital if you don't see here in this matchup you're probably not going to win it's the only way to realistically keep your hand advantage up i would mulligan very hard to get that hero if you don't get hero again this matchup is immensely harder if you can establish hero on three or four you can actually do pretty decent again something like great stone dragon versus fishbone quill there's a really strong argument to go with great stone dragon right now use like one jump and how far I'll go as your other ramp tools and less on the fishbone quill just because we're in a format where they're trying to rip your hand apart. So why rip your own hand apart essentially without having that draw engine online? Um, not saying to not play quill at all. I'm just saying there's a strong argument to play dragon at more than quill. So you really, again, in this matchup, I do think Bucky is favored by quite a bit. You just want to mulligan super hard. You need Hiram. You need Hiram and some items, especially like Popsicle. Just keep those draws going. Get to that six ink part. Get to that part where you can pull Medusa. You can pull Tremaine. You can pull Be Prepared. You have to be able to pull these cards off the deck and be able to use them. Uh, if I see them in my hand early, mulligan them away every single time. You do not want those uninkable high cost cards early in this matchup at all. You're just going to have to discard them. You need ink. And cards that replace themselves early on. That's what you need, and you need to mulligan for it aggressively. Uh, Ruby Amethyst. Again, I think Bucky's favored here, but I think it's better than the Ruby Sapphire matchup, and that's because you can just kind of play it slow. Live off of your Amethyst cards early and play your Amethyst cards, right? You want to just have card replace itself. Broom, Chernabog. Um, you know, Kusko on two, you want like friends on three or Maleficent three, turn four, sing friends, play rabbit, getting through like the first four turns where you're drawing a card every single turn in addition to your draw for turn is how you're going to stay in this game. And then you can keep inking and once again, get to that six, seven, eight plus ink. And then you just start dropping your heavy hitters from the Ruby engine. You use the amethyst heavy early on to get to that late game. Uh, Steel Song. Turning on Whole New World, very, very good here. If you can get like Whole New World online, uh, have it live, get those aerials out, get Queen early, get your Robin Hood on a three, getting these five singer characters out. So if you pull a Whole New World off the top of the deck, you can just go ahead and use it if you're running low on your hand. You want to, 
again, just be able to have the resources to deal with your opponent. They're probably going to use Ursula to come after your whole new worlds. Um, so you also have things like grab your swords, though, too. They're going to have to make that decision. Swords, whole new world. Which one do I want to hit? And that's going to, usually it's probably going to be the whole new world and you eat the swords. Uh, but depending on your hand, maybe you have to go after the swords. And you're just like, well, if they give me a whole new hand, I get rid of one of their swords. That's one less sword that they have to potentially draw. So, again, arguments to go either way. Um, I think Steel Song has a better matchup than Ruby Amethyst or Sapphire Ruby just because of Whole New World, because of their five cost singing characters. Not saying I think it's favorable, I'm just saying that I think that it has a chance in the matchup, especially if you're on the play. Um, Sapphire Steel. Sapphire Steel has a really good Bucky matchup, and that's because between the ramp, between the Whole New World, between the Steel Engine, you can just answer a lot of what they have doing. You can play four Babooms, and it don't matter if you miss a turn. Like, oh, I'm just going to Fishbone Quill, exert a card, or exert ink a card in my hand, play a Baboom, get rid of your Diablo. Next turn, same thing. Baboom, get rid of one of your cards, exert ink a card. And then I'm just going to whole new world and get a whole new hand. So uh, Blue Steel has a pretty good Bucky matchup. Um, this is one of the few decks that does. It just struggles into the red-blue matchup a lot more. So it's kind of like a little triangle that we got going on there where Bucky beats red-blue, red-blue beats blue steel, blue steel beats Bucky, and then you have Ruby Amethyst that's just decent and pretty much in the game against everything. Uh, little fun triangle with that just fourth deck sitting there like, don't forget about me, I'm here. Uh, tempo versus Bucky. I think... Well, Bucky's favored here, but I don't think it's a terrible matchup. It's similar to Ruby Amethyst. Um, you definitely can win, especially if you're on the play. Like I said, you have things like Jock. You have things like Kit Cloud Kicker to slow them down. You can sing Mother Knows Best to just bounce their characters so they're not getting that draw. You have the Amethyst draw. You have Queen's Castle. So you have tools to be able to combat the deck. It's just... It can feel a bit awkward, and if they get that tempo away from you, you might struggle to get it back because their deck maybe isn't built around challenging, neither is yours. So if you get into that, the things like Robin Hood, like Beast, like Tinkerbell just trade better than your characters do. So again, I don't think it's a bad matchup. I don't think it's a good matchup. It's just kind of, they're slightly favored, but if you're on the play, you have a shot at it. And on any given day, you could draw perfect. Maybe they don't even draw that good. You can win. Like, I'm not saying you can't. I just think that it is in the Bucky um, favor a little bit. So this is kind of some of my thoughts um, as far as taking down Bucky. Let me know how you liked the video. How was it? Uh, do you want to see more stuff like this? What are things you're doing that we didn't mention in the video? What's things you know that as a Bucky player what are things that people have done that worked against you or if you don't want to share any of that information with set championships here I get it but anyway guys thanks for watching take care until next time like share subscribe comment down below see ya